Hey Mustangs, in these notes we're going to take a look at photosynthesis. Now we're going to take a very simplified look at photosynthesis. It can actually be a lot more complex than what we're going to take a look at. Um, so we're just going to kind of build the foundation for understanding photosynthesis. Um, and then we'll get into the, um, the breakdown of the two steps of photosynthesis, the light dependent and the Calvin cycle. Um, but we're not going to go too in depth into exactly how, that hap how photosynthesis happens. So let's go ahead and take a look at photosynthesis. All right, so first information that you already know. Um, photosynthesis is a process by which plants make their food. And when we talk about plants making their food, we're talking about making carbohydrates and a specific one, glucose. Now, what they do is they take that light energy and um, they're going to trap it in glucose. And when they do that, they're basically converting the energy from the light energy into what we call chemical energy. So glucose is now chemical energy um, that stores energy for living things. So now living things can actually use energy from the sun because it's been converted into chemical energy that is now usable by living, thing, living things. So we actually talked about this with um, uh, autotrophs and heterotrophs and how autotrophs can make their own food, which they can then use as their energy, um, but heterotrophs can't do that. Um, so heterotrophs have to eat other living things to get their energy, so what they're looking for is the glucose. All right, so where does photosynthesis happen? So we know that it happens in the leaves. Um, so if we were to take a really close look at the leaves, um, we would see that each cell has dozens of chloroplasts inside, not just one chloroplast. We're usually, usually used to just drawing one or three chloroplasts inside of a plant cell when we draw our diagrams. But in reality, each cell is gonna have dozens of chloroplasts inside. Um, each one is going to undergo, undergo uh, photosynthesis. Now, the breakdown of the actual parts of the chloroplast. Um, we're going to need to know these to understand the two steps of photosynthesis, uh, how they occur and where they're actually happening at. Um, so when we look at a chloroplast, we're going to go ahead and draw it and learn some of the, the basic names of some of the parts of the chloroplast. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my chloroplast here. It's usually an oval shaped organelle. And remember, it's a membrane-bound organelle, so it has its own personal membrane around the outside there. Um, on the inside, if we were to cut this chloroplast open, um, we'd see these little stacks on the inside. So these little stacks that go like this. And there's never just one, there's several of these stacks. Now, each of these little circles that I'm drawing has their own special name. So one single circle that we're looking at here, um, and remember, in reality, they're three-dimensional shape, but here we're looking at them as circles. Each one of these is called a thylakoid. Now, an entire stack of them, an entire stack of thylakoids is called a granum. G-R-A-N-U-M, granum. And then another part of the chloroplast that you're going to need to know is the stroma. So the entire inside of the chloroplast is filled with a fluid. That fluid part is called the stroma. So all around these thylakoids, these stacks, the granums, um, there's a fluid and that is the stroma. So the fluid filled parts of the chloroplast is the stroma. All right, now one thing that students often ask is why are the plants green? So in order to trap the energy from the sun, to trap the uh, energy from the sunlight, um, the plants use a pigment called chlorophyll. And that pigment itself is actually green. And the way it works is chlorophyll is going to absorb all colors of light um, except for the color green. Now the human eye really isn't all that great. There's actually other animals out there that have way better eyes than we do. Um, so if you look at the picture over here to the right, it shows the actual spectrum of light. Uh, 
we actually only see a very small part of the light spectrum. So we see the colors, we don't see the radio waves, we don't see ultraviolet rays, we don't see x-rays, but that's actually all traveling through the air around us. Our eyes are just not sophisticated enough to actually pick that stuff up. Um, so we can see the colors. So when light hits um, the chlorophyll, it's going to absorb every single color and absorb the energy from all those colors, uh, except for the color green. The color green is going to bounce off. And the way the human eye works is when a color bounces off of something, it hits our eye and our brain tells us what color it is. Um, so for example, with a plant, white light, so when we see light from the sun, um, it's actually all colors. So that's a really interesting thing. Um, when human eyes see all colors of the rainbow, we perceive it as white light. So when that white light, it's all the colors of the rainbow, but we see white, um, when it hits an object, um, in this case a plant leaf, it's going to hit the object. That object is going to absorb all the colors except for the color it is. So in the case of a plant, it's going to absorb all colors except for green. Green's going to bounce off of that plant, bounce off and hit our eyes, and we are going to see the color green. Um, let's say someone's wearing, I'll grab this real quick, let's say this one right here. So let's say the color red. Um, so what's happening here, all colors are hitting the box. Um, it's absorbing all colors except for red. Red is bouncing off of the box, hitting our eyes, and we're seeing the color red. So that's how we perceive colors using the human eye here. Um, so plants are green because the pigment inside of it that actually helps absorb the light energy absorbs every single color except for the color green, which bounces off. All right, now let's get into the actual photosynthesis here. So we know photosynthesis is a chemical reaction. That means we're going to take something, uh, we're going to take molecules, tear them apart, and rearrange them into something new. So when we talk about a chemical reaction, you have the reactants, which are what you start with, the molecules you start with. Those get torn apart and rearranged into the new stuff, which are the products. So here in photosynthesis, um, when we take a look here, the reactants are carbon dioxide and water. Those two molecules are going to be broken apart and rearranged into our final products. So we say that the reactants needed for photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and water. So those are our two reactants. They get torn apart, rearranged into our products. The products made at the end of photosynthesis are oxygen and our glucose. So here's actually a picture of the glucose molecule right here. Um, so I told you guys in class to remember um, glucose's chemical formula. Formula. Remember CHO 6126. So CHO 6126, it tells us that glucose is made out of six carbon atoms, uh, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. If we take a look at this picture, we can actually count those. So um, the carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six. The hydrogen, you're going to count them, you're going to get 12. The oxygen, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you, you can actually see those molecules that make up the glucose. So the two products in photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen. So those are the two things that, are, that were made from um, the carbon dioxide and water being torn apart and rearranged into glucose and oxygen. All right, so if glucose and oxygen are made at the end of photosynthesis, which one is the true goal? What, what's the whole point of photosynthesis? Why is the plant even doing this? Um, it's to make glucose. So glucose is the main goal of um, of photosynthesis. That's why the plant is doing this, to make the glucose molecules, which trap the sun's energy. So that makes oxygen a waste product. So oxygen is merely a byproduct of the plant making glucose. But it's a very helpful and lucky uh, waste product, byproduct for us, because we rely so heavily on oxygen. Um, you know that if we go without a certain amount of time without oxygen, we are going to die. Um, so even though it's a waste product, it's a very helpful and useful waste product um, for many other animals, including the plant though too. So plants are actually going to use oxygen um, for another process as well. Um, just not as much oxygen as we use uh, for, uh, for keeping us alive. All right. 
um, the equation. So this is the last thing we're going to take a look at. So um, go ahead, try to write it down on your own first. See if you can remember the equation. So go ahead, pause the video, and then come back and see if you got it right. Okay, so the word form for photosynthesis. Um, it doesn't matter which reactant you put first, um, as long as you put them on the correct side, the left side of the arrow. So we have, I'm going to go with water plus carbon dioxide. Arrow. And we're going to put light over the arrow on this. That's the, one of the energies involved in um, photosynthesis. And we're going to make our product, so tear apart carbon dioxide, tear apart water, and we're going to rearrange them into glucose and oxygen. And again, remember, glucose is the goal of photosynthesis. That's what the plant's trying to make. Oxygen is simply a waste product. All right, for the chemical equation, um, if you know uh, the chemical formulas for these up here, um, it's really easy uh, to just bring them down and then add the magic number. So in order for photosynthesis to happen, we need six water molecules, has to be six, that's the minimum, plus six carbon dioxide molecules, light over the arrow, and the arrow is telling us that the carbon dioxide and water molecules are going to be torn apart and rearranged into glucose. So for glucose, remember CHO6126. So CHO6126, that's your glucose, plus oxygen. We're going to make six oxygen molecules. And there you go. That's the word equation and the chemical equation for photosynthesis. All right, so that's the end of the notes for um, now. Um, we'll continue in class um, when I see you next.